I hardly remember my grandparents, the Genovese. They migrated to Toronto and refused to let any of their children speak Italian. They knew if you spoke Italian, dug ditches, and you were a laborer, and they expected to return home. The Genovese came to Canada on a horse and buggy in the early 1890s from Pennsylvania, at Dunsmore to be exact. Mom was only five or six years old. They joined their other relatives in the west end of Toronto, which we call the Ward. The Ward gave birth to many diverse ethnic communities, but what they all had in common was a need to be understood. There were so many different cultures. It was like a stew, and they all got together and added to the flavor of the times. But not speaking English proved to be a crippling factor in their lives. As long as I remember, people would come to our home. It didn't matter the time of day or what you were doing. They were there asking for a little translation to be done. Most of them were afraid of English authority figures, but not mum. As far as she was concerned, she had just as much rights as a Canadian as anyone else. You see, my mother loved people, all kinds of people. So when she came and she couldn't communicate with her neighbors, she decided to learn their language. And she did it for not only the Italian people, she did it for the Germans, the Jewish, the Ukrainians, all worked in that little melting pot where we all live. And because of the association with them all, she learned to speak like six or seven different languages. And because of that, she became a fixture in the, in the, uh, in the ward. Everybody knew her. And when there was a problem, go see Mrs. Bagnetta. She was officially Canadian. She, she wanted us to be Canadians. We're Italian. She wanted us never to forget the Italian background, but she wanted us to be Canadian. And that's what we became. Observe the laws of Canada. Observe the laws of Canada. And fulfill my duties. <laughs>